Hi. Part three of uh, discovering who I really am. Moving on from part two, I suggest you watch all the parts uh, to make sense of it all. Yeah, so I was mind blown by the information that guy gave me after I sent him that email. His excerpt from his book and what he it just um, reflects exactly my experience, what I thought about my experience, obviously, and what my experience was and how it played out and all the details about it were, the, were just the same. So it was absolutely right that I talk to him because he knew exactly what was going on. I've never heard that explanation of a secondary incarnation anywhere else. He's the only person. Now if there maybe there is someone else who's done something like said something like that. He was um uh, a great fan of Dolores Cannon who he met and uh they had some similar information that they both got from their own sources. Uh, so maybe Dolores Cannon has something similar, but I'm not sure if she does. But I'm not an expert on Dolores Cannon. But anyway, yeah, I've never heard that anywhere else. That was, it was really mind-blowing. He knew exactly what was going on with me, and even down to the UFO experiences of, you know, abduction, so we call them. I, I, I don't really call my experiences of abductions, because obviously I am ultimately from somewhere else i agreed to come here and have this experience and i am fully aware in an agreement with the meeting of peoples that are from where i'm from and those that are uh compatriots etc that are coming down to make sure that i'm okay and you know get information from me etc so it's not really abduction because it's a, it's an agreement you could call it a pre-life agreement. A lot of people talk about pre-life agreements. People who are, you know, on the spiritual path and they come at it from the angle that they realise some people have near-death experiences. I've got into near-death experiences. It's very interesting. Or it's all talking about the same window of, of the greater reality, if you like, of the ultimate uh, reality beyond this uh, three-dimensional or frequency environmental level of being in which we find ourselves living at the moment it's all all the earth rest is part of the other rest of the great reality so a lot of people who have near death experiences etc they experience other places and also they get information and understand that they that they knew they would come here and they wanted to come here and they had a life plan uh whatever that was for each person and so when they understood that they understood a lot of things uh, so that's talking about a similar, but that's not, that goes so far, but I find with Guy Needler, for me, I'm just somebody not, you know, I think the humans in general like things to hold on to, because we're talking about places and reality that is beyond our understanding really, and beyond our physics and beyond our our language. There's no words for a lot of things, so we have to make do uh yeah, so it's difficult to uh, talk about these things and to understand it in a way that we can that makes a lot of sense. But ultimately, I find that guy has a much deeper understanding of the structure through his experiences and his interactions with uh, beings and sentient energies. I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> the language fails, right? Uh, who are masters of the construction of the multiverse and beyond you know, most of the reality beyond what we understand. And so I find it really helpful uh, to have, yeah, this um, structure to grasp hold of, to try and understand where I am in the in the structure of everything. Because with my experiences, I found that I thought I was a human. Well, I am a human presently, uh, having an experience here on this planet, and it's like this, and the solar system's like this, and the universe is like, something like this that we vaguely know about um, but then all of a sudden no I, I, everything's different I'm a, I'm a secondary incarnation there's two of me of the same being the same person and uh, I live somewhere else in the multiverse 
And so, you know, all bets are off. <laughs> Got to start again from scratch. So you find yourself in a sort of limbo. And so it's really useful. So guys, really brilliant at having this structure. And, I'm, and so what I'll do is I'll talk about the structure, how he sees it. And uh, uh, thanks a lot to Guy for letting me use his information. I did in a book and I'll talk about some of it here. And uh, some of his slides that he used in his lectures, I shall put up on the screen somewhere. Or over, over my face probably. <laughs> Um, and uh, I'll talk about how the structure works in his understanding. So I'm just going along with his understanding because I don't know about the ultimate structure universe. I only know, what do I really know? What do any of us really know? And that is what we experience. What is our own personal experience? You know, be it physical, uh, sociological, psych psychological and spiritual. Really, and all these things are are one, but we, you know, sort of like separate levels of the same thing. Yes, we'll, we'll start, we'll go with that. So I think it's important because now you know my experience of this other me, my primary incarnation. And now I, in, you know, and I know from Guy's work and from contacting him that I'm not going crazy. And there's many people that call themselves star seeds, etc., which are people that were that come from other places but having a human experience. Now, before this, and before meeting myself, I did have dreams of being of a person with long blonde hair, actually, having a life with other people that I didn't recognise. And these were just dreams, and I thought they were just dreams, but actually I think there are memories seeping through because the consciousness uh of my other, of my primary incarnation and me, you know, the same person. So things do bleed through. He's having a human experience as much as he can through me, while well, I am him. Confusing, right? Um, but sometimes things bleed through, and of course he's he's deliberately met me now. We've met each other, so he wants me to evolve in my understanding and connection with the world, wider reality, and with him, and all that that means. Which I don't know all of that. What that means. <clears throat> but only some, of course. I'm just sharing what I know so far, pretty much. So I'm just seeking to understand still what it all is, what it all means, as much as I can as I go along. And more things will be revealed, hopefully, as I go along. So it's very useful to have this structure. So I, because of what Guy has said, and no one else has said, that fits in exactly with my experience. I have some faith in what else he says about the structure of the, the multiverse and and how it's working. And I do have some other experiences that fits in slightly with his experience of, of some higher beings, creative beings that create this universe and the multiverse. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start reading a bit and then probably talk about it and, and see where we go as always uh yeah okay as things trigger my memory so i'll just i'll just say a little bit about guy his part his previous uh who he is and how he a little bit of where he came to where he is now well not really just what he's done so this is taken from his website guy has an mba and msc a c -ing. A C E N G that is M I E T, don't know what that is, M C M A, I don't know what that is. Initially trained as a mechanical engineer and quickly progressed to become a chartered electrical and electronics engineer. A chartered someone in anything is a very high um, of recognition, really, because it's like chartered is royal, royal chartered, I think. I think they're royal chartered, which means you're highly, highly thought of. However, throughout this earthly training, he was always aware of the greater reality around him as he caught glimpses of the worlds of spirit from his teens to his early twenties. These glimpses drew him to read extensively the spiritual texts of the day and meditate intensively. Then he was told by his guides to focus on his earthly contribution. So he subconsciously scaled back the intensity of his spiritual work. 
When Dai reached his late thirties, he felt the call to return to his spiritual roles. The next six years saw him become a Reiki master and perusing a four-year commit pursuing sorry <laughs> perusing and pursuing a four-year commitment to learn energy and vibrational therapy techniques from experts in the fields. He studied with Helen Scott, a direct student and teacher of the Barbara Brennan School of Healing Methodologies, as a prerequisite for attending a BBSH, that's the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, based courses. Students were required to pursue personal development and psychotherapy various, via various methodologies like the Pathwork methodology described by Susan Thesenga and other methodologies developed by Donovan Thesenga and John and Eva Piriakos or Piriakos. His training and experience in energy-based therapies has resulted in his being a member of the Complementary Medical Association, ah, that's that's the MCMA. During his training as an energy healer, 1999 to 2005, Guy discovered that he was able, via meditation, to traverse the frequencies above those associated with the auric layers. It was during these trips to the higher frequencies that he discovered he could communicate with the energetic entities that existed on the various levels of our multiverse. So this is the beginnings of his understanding from information from these entities. These entities included the OM, beings created from the energies of the original manifestation who pervade the omniverse that is the origin, the creator of the god of our multiverse, the source entity, its peers, the procreators, and the creator of the co-creators itself, the origin, referred to the absolute in Hindu texts. So from here I will continue with his understanding of the multiverse and our place in it, which answers a lot of questions about my experiences and maybe some for a lot of people of you out there, hopefully listening and watching this. So he talks a bit about what he called the origin. It's referred to as the absolute in Hindu texts. So what's the multiverse versus universe? The multiverse belongs to our source entity. It's structured, made up of all the universes in our source entity's control. And what's the universe? equals one frequency level, also referred to as a frequency band or environment, containing a number of sub-frequencies. For example, a frequency is like a radio bandwidth, which contains a number of radio frequencies within the bandwidth. So the source, our source entity, which is number one of 12 such source entities, of which is known to humans on this planet as God, so the source is basically another label for God. The source has created the multiverse within itself. And our universe is of the lowest frequency levels of all the universes in the multiverse. So that's a, a big structure already, isn't it? So we have source that we call God. Well, various religions and such like it, on this planet called God. But it's just a label, right? The source has created the multiverse. In the multiverse, there are universes. And our universe that we live in is of the lowest level, frequency levels of all of the universes within the multiverse. A frequency level or frequency band is a form of energy. It's an environment and condition for energies to exist within. The multiverse combines frequency levels to make up dimensions. So this is where we have uh, a different structure because we know dimensions differently. <clears throat> to how Guy is going to explain dimensions. So he says one dimension is made up of different frequencies. And like I said before, the what we call the first three dimensions in Guy's structure, I'm going to stick to Guy's structure because it's easier to explain everything. But what we call the three dimensions are just three frequencies, which are part of one dimension. I will put some slides up on the screen so it be easier to follow. So there's 12 dimensions that exist in our source entity's multiverse. So there's only 12 dimensions in the whole of the multiverse. Each dimension, except our own, which is the first, 
as the following structure. So this is the structure of all the dimensions that are not the ones, not the one that we live in. They're made up of three subdimensional components, and each subdimensional component is made up of twelve frequency levels. So one dimension equals thirty thirty six frequency levels. So that means 36 universes, because one frequency level is a universe in its own right. This is massive, this structure. And also, as I'm looking at the book here, um, it's also what you need to know is that one dimension has 36 universes, and each universe above the previous one is also much larger than the previous frequency level or universe. In fact, everything, as you may notice within this structure, is in powers of 12. The increasing infinitude of each universal frequency level is the same. So each universe is 12 times bigger than the previous one below it. So the next universe up from us is 12 times the size of this universe. And we don't even know the extent of this universe. Wow. It's just... It is unimaginable. This is just talk and numbers, really, because you can try and imagine it, but we, we can't really imagine our own universe size, as we're just a less than a speck in the in this universe. Uh, frequency levels or universes are also completely self-contained, simultaneous, manifest universes in their own right. But upper frequency levels or universes are not parallel universes, so that's something we have to know. We're not talking about parallel universes. That is another thing entirely, where event spaces are created through our choices, which create localised, suburban-sized, city, country, planet and galaxy, or even universe, or even multiverse-sized event spaces. But the explanation of that is beyond what we need, the explanation of our place in the multiverse first. So we're going to look at more of Guy's information for that. So parallel universes are, I think, what we already think about as being different choices, creating different parallel universes. But this multiversal structure is not that. That is something separate, which adds even more complexity to it. I don't know if it's necessary to know about our, our universe, but I'll just talk about it anyway. So our universe is unique. It exists within the first dimension of all the dimensions of the multiverse, right? Also referred to as the physical universe. It occupies all of the first dimension. So this dimension that we live in has one universe in it, and that's us. Whereas the others, all have 36 universes in. The first is the only dimension that is made up of 12 frequency levels only, with a composite subdimensional component condition. Our universe is therefore split into 12 specific frequency levels. So when we talk about one frequency level being a whole universe, that's in the, the upper dimensions. In this dimension, we have one dimension, one universe, but our universe has 12 specific frequency levels. So the three sub-components in this uh, dimension that we are in have collapsed into one composite sub-dimensional component allowing only 12 frequencies to be created. And the 12 frequencies are so low in frequency that they are all required in order to create one universal environment. The subsequent frequency levels, the universes above us, have so much more infinitude, they're so much bigger than we are, that they can house the basics required to create a universe. So the 13th frequency in the first subcomponent of the second full dimension is a complete universe in its own right, and so on for the rest of the frequencies to the top of the 12th dimension. Like I say, you should be seeing some uh, graphics to go along with this to give you some idea. And that gives you some idea of what we're talking about of the multiverse. It's uh, a really mind-boggling. So within this uh, multiverse environment, we need to understand some other things. I'm going to give um, Guy's understanding of other things. 
such as aliens and where, what their place is and what our place is in the universe. Because I'm using his structure and his understanding in order to explain mine, well it does explain mine, and everyone else's.